Hello everybody, welcome back. So today we are going to get into another empire in Southeast Asia, and that is going to be the Emperor of Majapahit, who is kind of the successor to Srivijaya. So let's get right into them. So predating Majapahit, we had the kingdom of Singhasari, and Singhasari is typically credited um, as a nation who rises through the, or an empire that rises through the 12th and 13th century, and are the primary ones for taking out and displacing Srivijaya as the main empire in Java slash Sumatra in modern day Indonesia. Um, and by around the year 1222, they are controlling just about all of Java, and they control a variety of sea lanes, which of course, as I've mentioned before in Southeast Asia, it's not about as much about the land you control, it's about the access to the water, because that is how all of our trade goods get around. We also do know that they also developed the idea of kind of divine rulers or god kings, um, which is a little bit interesting. We don't necessarily see that all over the place, but that's going to morph into an interesting thing uh, in Majapahit when we get there. So let's keep going. So here, as we see, um, if you look on kind of the darker orange on the bottom down here, okay, you see the capital is Kutarja Singhasari right here. And then they control pretty much all of this directly. These areas are what we call vassal states. In other words, they were conquered by Singhasari, but Singhasari doesn't necessarily occupy them. Uh, they have to give like tribute and stuff like that. Uh, Srivijaya, they were they were basically up here. All right, um, and much of the as you see here, these expeditions. Uh, of conquering these areas, this solid red line, um, and the dotted lines are more expeditions of what they call on the map calls envoys that they're making, uh, in some cases, deals with uh, these city-states or even alliances. As you can see there, they're going to secure an alliance with Champa, which, is, uh, which was a kingdom that developed really from the 2nd through almost the 17th century in Vietnam. Now, that went on for a decent amount of time, but in around 1290-ish to 1292, of the Singhasari are going to fall, and that is under the reign of King Kirtana Nagara. And on the picture here on the right, this is kind of a relief sculpture of what was of what is left from a temple that depicted. Kirtana Nagara. Uh, unfortunately, the face has been removed, uh, probably on purpose. Um, there was another group in Java called the Kadiri, and the Kadiri were not ones to want to be uh, controlled by the Singhasari. And under their king, a uh, very short lived king, uh, Jayakatwang, they are able to rise up against the Singhasari. They conquer the Singhasari capital kingdom. They kill the king, and they establish, for a very short time, their own kingdom. And that initially would be led by, like I said, Jayakatwang. And this is a depiction of him here. Interestingly enough, when we see this is actually was found in Vietnam. Uh, but we see here a little bit more of a peaceful type thing, even though he was a bit of a conqueror, but that's okay. Um, this is very influenced by Hinduism, which I'll be talking about a lot for this area. Uh, just the overall depiction, you see kind of these multi-arms, which is a commonality with uh, Hindu depictions of God or godlike beings. So it's kind of interesting to see that. However, something very interesting happens shortly after the Kadiri conquer the island. The Mongols arrive. Now, the Mongols have been conquering pretty much everywhere throughout the 1200s. And in 1292, they are here to basically wreak vengeance on what they thought was the Singhasari. Uh, this is actually a uh, little drawing there. I couldn't really find much, uh, so I thought, hey, someone did a fun pencil drawing. Why not? You know, this guy's kind of happy right here. He's hanging out. But we can see you got guys with swords, guys with bows. Um, this is, although, a fairly depiction of a Mongol junk. Uh, this is under the Yuan dynasty, which was being run by Kublai Khan, who was the grandson of Chinggis Khan. 
And he had gotten into contact with Singh Hasari before and saying, look, uh, we hear about you guys. So tell you what, you guys are going to start paying us tribute or else there's going to be a problem. And the king of Singh Hasari, Krishna Nagara, was like, yeah, no way. I'm a god king. We don't pay to you, you guys. Forget that. Well, when the Mongols received that note, they were like, okay, it's time for you to go and in come to invade the island with a relatively small force. And that's when something fascinating happens. In steps Prince Vijaya, who was the son-in-law of King Kirtana Nagara. He is very deftly going to get to the Mongols first and collaborate them to find out why they're here. And when he determines that they are there to take out the Singh Hasari, he is very clever. He says, well, there was this king who, you know, you were supposed to come and chastise, but he's dead. However, there is another king who is here which is the king of Kadiri, who holds that throne, and I can certainly help you take vengeance on him. Well, the Mongols are like, well, we're here, we're supposed to wreak some vengeance, we're supposed to take back some stuff, so okay. So he cuts a deal, Prince Vijaya, and he gets the aid of the Mongols, and he is going to be able to overthrow the Kadiri. He's going to be able to get um, Jakatuang killed and get himself on the throne. Then, as soon as he gets on the throne, he turns on the Mongols and is able to drive them out of Java. And with that, forms his new kingdom, Majapahit. And he takes the kingly name of Kirtara Jasa Jayawardana. What just what fantastic way to, to, to use... What's the word I want to use here? To use diplomacy, to getting to these guys first. I mean, this is about as, as you use the word deft, because it, it it's just so delicate of how he was able to pull this off. And Majapahit is born. And Majapahit would continue to grow throughout the, particularly the 14th century. It would reach its height, especially under King Hayam Waruk who ruled from 1350 to 1389, and his very capable prime minister and leader of the military, Gaja Mada. So on the, the picture on the right here, um, uh, this pencil sketch, again, this is based off of just some uh, material we have because a lot of Majapahit is not left. We don't have a lot of things. Uh, this is King Hayam Waruk, and we think this was what was left of a statue of Gaja Mada. And really, it was about territorial expansion and control. And that picture on the right is actually a modern-day statue of Gajamada. So he is held in very high regard still in certain parts of Java. Um, they are going to really expand out. They completely finish off the Srivijaya when they take the city of Palambang. And now what, what you know, Srivijaya was trying to cling on, they're completely gone. Now, there's differing accounts here, and I'm going to show you a, a, a map in a second of how big they think they were, and again, I'll discuss that in a moment, but we do know that they had a very robust foreign affairs. They had relationships in trade with China, the Champa Kingdom, kingdoms of Cambodia, kingdoms in Thailand, Thailand as well as we know, um, merchants from the Middle East and as far, uh, as far away from the Middle East and India also uh, came here. So here's the map, okay? So this is one of those things again. So it looks like Majapah is just the main city here and about half of Java. And then the rest of these areas, which is pretty widespread all throughout, okay, Sumatra. And then we've got the tip of Southeast Asia where modern day um, Singapore and whatnot is and part of Thailand. And then over on some of the big islands over here. So again, we don't have a lot of resources. Some resources will say that they actually did conquer this area and they ran all of this with like governors. Other habit, as this map does, is that these are vassal states that they were conquered, but Majapahit doesn't really rule them. Um, some of the evidence of their government system would point to that, but nonetheless, they're really the kingdom in 
this area that controls more than any other empire of this era. And it is pretty impressive. However, it doesn't last forever. Um, eventually, after King Hayal Muruk, uh, they start to have succession issues. You get multiple claimants to thrones, which then results in internal conflicts. And really what dooms them in the end, as it often is the case, is the rise of other kingdoms, specifically the Sultanates of Malacca and the Sultanates of Damak. Uh, so Malacca is right here in the green, who, by the way, will eventually conquer pretty much all of this until eventually after them the Dutch do. And then you have this little area of Damak right here. This is kind of where they're starting, as you see here in 1478. So you see what's left of Majapahit. They still have a good amount of control. And what slowly but good as surely happen, as you follow the, the, the mouse here, is Malacca is going to span over here. Okay, then they're going to start to come down here and here. And then Damak is going to rise up. And in the 1520s, Damak, what we think maybe around 1527, um, they are able to actually overrun the core zone of Majapahit, uh, take over the city. The uh, Sultanate of Malacca sweeps everything else up. And thus, the great civilization is gone. Um, so only lasting about 200 years, but in that 200 years, they were they were still uh, pretty impressive on their run. Okay, so that's just some basic historical stuff about them. Our next video that I'm going to be talking about, I'll get more into some cultural things, achievements, and stuff like that. So I hope this gave you a little bit of idea about who the, the Majapahit were, and we'll get more deeply into that next time. Take care, everybody.